One of the reasons we chose homeschooling was for the quality of the education. I think this form of schooling actually prepares the kids better for success later on in life because they have to take responsibility for planning their own learning. I think it's a fantastic preparation for, for future life and certainly I mean their transition into further education, university and things will be that much easier for doing this. He definitely, I find since he's been homeschooling, he's become quite self-driven and um, motivated to do well. With the surfing, he started from scratch um, straight after lockdown and he made his provincial side this year, which he never could have done had he stayed in, in traditional schooling just because he wouldn't have had the time to do that. Education is going through a metamorphosis and then by the time he's out of school I mean there's going to be careers we haven't even thought of yet mm. and at the end of the day I want them to come out with a mind that's alive that's mm -hmm. able to think that's able to problem solve that's able to think laterally that's able to to spark that they can be introduced to something that they've that they've never seen before mm -hmm. and have the capacity and the skill set to learn and figure it out. Mm -hmm. I enjoy homeschooling because it's not limiting. You have more time to do things that you're actually interested in. And I think, yeah, that's, that's the big thing is you have so much more freedom um, to do what you love and enjoy. I think that's one of the most important things that any parent can give to their, to, to their child is, is that they, they leave school one day and they are confident members of society. Hello. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Three. <laughs> you were put out of sync. <laughs> I'm slow. <laughs> I always said I would never homeschool and that I wasn't a teacher. And so it's only because of COVID that we were put in that situation where we had to do it. And then actually realized, oh, wait, we can do that. Actually, it works quite well. It pretty much started because of COVID, otherwise we probably would never have been brave enough to do it. But um, thanks to lockdown, we were forced to give homeschooling a go and we realised actually it really worked quite well for us. So. Yeah. Um, and the kids loved it. They were much more relaxed. Um, we found we were more disciplined than we thought we had the ability to be. And so when lockdown finished, first of all, my daughter um, had just started high school and... We weren't entirely happy with the whole high school experience, so she said she'd like to start homeschooling and continue permanently. And then Ollie decided that it might work for him too, so he homeschooled too, and um, we've been doing it ever since. Lisedi used to take uh, his brother's textbooks, uh, tertiary textbooks, and he used to teach himself mathematics. And sometimes he would bring uh, textbooks from his traditional school library, and he would focus on topics like quantum physics. And that's when I realized that uh, Lisetti can work independently. And then we sat together and we discussed about homeschooling, and we came to an agreement that, uh, yes, he is definitely ready. Already, he has shown some skills that he can do that by doing research, self-study, and even going beyond, you know, looking for knowledge that is far, far, far beyond his school level. So one of the reasons we chose um, homeschooling was for the quality of the education. Um, I knew that the children would be getting a level of education that will get them into university anywhere in the world should they wish to go that route, um, which for me is, is, is wonderful, you know, not having to, to worry constantly whether their level of education is up to scratch internationally. No, I think uh, Lisset is receiving a good uh, quality education because I've seen so much improvement from his uh, performance. He has improved a lot. Before he started uh, with homeschooling, 
Yes, he was a, a top achiever. Now, wow, he is excelling. Uh, his uh, grades uh, went up. Now, he uh, reaches uh, level nine, of which I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of. That's when I see that uh, he's, he's really receiving good education, good quality education. So we start school at nine, which means that, um, and we don't have to sit in any kind of traffic. And uh, we can do exercise in the morning, so it's like a whole family thing. So that's also mm. something that is, has been added to our family life that didn't exist before. We can get so much done in so little... Shorter time. In, mm. Yeah, much shorter time. I think actually we've become fitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's true. Because now we say we start at nine, but there is like a definite schedule. Mm -hmm. on the, it's on the wall. Yeah, it's lots printed. gets done. We get up. So by the time we get to nine, we've lived quite a bit. But it also, it's nice because if things come up, because we, um, like we're also involved in the film industry and modeling. So, you know, there may be a morning casting or a shoot. And it used to be always conflicting with school. And then I'd have to call and explain. Whereas now it's fun. We can go that day and then we can catch up another day. We can actually tailor it to our family. And that's what's great is we have that freedom and then also it's a flexibility issue um we've got family responsibilities in the uk as well um i'm an only child with an aging mother and we, you know i never know when i might need to drop everything and take the family over there to to help her so now we've got complete flexibility um if something happens to my mum and we need to go spend two or three months there, there's no stress with missing schooling. You can just get up and go. So it's been a, a vast weight off my shoulders. Generally, in terms of schedule, we're, we're quite disciplined. Um, we make sure that we, we start work by eight o'clock at the very latest. Um, and without all the rushing from A to B and not having to have teachers settling down disruptive classes, dealing with discipline issues, Generally, the kids are through their work within three hours. Um, they'll have a break in the middle. And everyone's just a lot more relaxed because school these days, it's just go, go, go. They're, they, they're expected to do so many activities, many of which aren't their passion, um, don't even interest them at all. And every second of their day is accounted for. Now, now they can focus on the things they love doing. And it's, it's, it's awesome. They, they can really spend most of their time doing, doing the things they want to as opposed to what the school wants them to do. And then also about three times a week or so I'll go to a study centre where I can sit in a classroom with a group of people and we'll get our work done. Yeah, it's a lot more flexible than traditional schooling. Because I'm a working mum, I'm off to work so he remains with his brother but when I come back I do go through his work and check. I don't know, I think she trusts me in a way. Yeah. So then, yeah, she gives me the freedom as well, you know, to manage myself as well. She doesn't actually say, okay, from eight o'clock to nine o'clock, you must get this done. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't do any of that. Mm. So yeah, I think I also enjoy that freedom personally, to say, okay, um, myself, I want to do biology today, then tomorrow I'll do chemistry, you know. Yeah, not mixing subjects in a day, I really enjoy that. When it comes to time, he can, manage his, he can manage his time very well. And when it comes to responsibility, I, I trust him so much. You just, if you can just give him a task to do, he does it. And uh, that really shows me that he has grown so much. I'm also happy that he said he's at home and he's safe. Yeah, I enjoy being at home because my mom still goes to normal and she still goes to work, but my brother's at home. Um, and we actually have the same interest. He codes, so he's a professional developer. And I also had have actually an interest in coding. So, you know, we do chat and he does chat about the things he does at work. And I'm like, oh, really? And I do understand some of the things. So it's a nice um, bonding moment, if you can say that. Um, but yeah, um, being around your family, I think is very important important they're around so it's actually i think brought us really close as a family but i sometimes wonder if the current system makes dysfunctional families mm. because they're so apart and the kids spend so much time at school and then at sport and then on weekends there's all the sports stuff mm -hmm. so then the family is always running around when is the family actually 
together. together. I don't think, Kian, you had a negative experience in mm -mm. school. You were very sociable, liked, you know. The teachers the liked teachers you. The teachers liked you. Everybody so it was a very raved. positive experience. So it mm -hmm. wasn't a reaction so much of negative experiences per se. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy about homeschooling? So first of all, I, I've always been quite good at math and reading. And, well, math and English. And then, um, and at school, I was never challenged with math. And then, and it was always so easy. Like, um, by the time I was in grade three, I already asked my older brother to explain uh, negative numbers to me. I used to have to wait for everyone to finish, and then I'd have a whole bunch of free time. But that'd get boring, because i just have to sit and wait for everyone. But now, now over here, I can go ahead if I need to, and I can take longer with other things. Yeah, and then I can really understand things properly, because I don't need to speed ahead if everyone else gets it. And I don't need to, like, wait for everyone else to get it. So it's just, it works very well. When you're wasting time, like what happens a lot at school, it, it's just the nature of the system. It's not because, it's just because it takes so long to get everyone going. So wasting time leads to more wasting time. It becomes like a habit or <laughs> like you become comfortable with wasting time. So as soon as he has to take responsibility, wasting time becomes a negative thing. Mm. You don't want to waste time. No, because there's get less it done. free time. Because there's less free time. So <laughs> yeah. now the, the more efficient I am, the more I can do in my day. And so somehow it leads to you doing a lot more. It's like the... It's greater than the sum of its parts in some weird way. It like it balloons. Just so much time is being wasted just dealing with the one or two, you know, travelled kids. So the thing I enjoy most about homeschooling is just the flexibility is amazing. Yeah, for Ollie's sport, um, unfortunately, you can't schedule when the waves are going to be good. So yeah. homeschooling's ideal. <laughs> yes. But now that I'm homeschooled, I can choose my subjects and do a bunch of things that I like. And yeah, just schooling every day is not as overwhelming as it used to be. All the activities that they put you into, it can get you, uh, it can make you and your friends really competitive. And yeah, I, th I think I think there was a lot of competition between the kids. I mean, he he, he loved school and had great friends, but they would turn on each other quite quickly, just over a sort of jealousies if one got better marks than the other or sports achievements to the extent that achievements almost weren't worth it because you felt like you'd be victimised by your friends for doing well. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, Oddie's just competing against himself and then his competition is doing something he loves. Mm. Um, so he's free to achieve without having to worry about what his friends yeah. say. And all our friends now just they we all support each other like in surf competitions. As I said, there's quite a bit of free time being a homeschooler. Um, I mostly enjoy surfing obviously. And just hanging out with my friends because tennis, you do lots of tennis. I so. do quite a bit of tennis, yeah. And, and lots of time editing your videos, you like yeah. shooting your friends. And being as homeschooled. In video shooting. I get to choose my friends basically. You can just choose the people that you really enjoy and people that are like-minded to yeah, the I mean, sports. The really awesome thing about it is that um, the surf competitions are all around the country. So yeah. Oddie's friend group is now spread all around the country as mm -hmm. opposed to just locally. And, and yeah. because of the competitions we get to travel, and it tends to be the same group of kids that, that travel everywhere. So he's got, he's got buddies everywhere. I guess also because he's, he's had so much time now to focus on the things that he, he loves doing. Um, he, now he can set himself goals in areas outside of his academic field. And he, he's really had the, the time and the opportunity to pursue those goals, um, which has been fabulous. I mean, with the surfing, he started from scratch um, straight after lockdown and he made his provincial side this year, which he, he never could have done had he stayed in, in traditional schooling just because he wouldn't have had the time to do that and put, to put yeah. in the effort. So he's had this opportunity to set himself goals and see those goals through, which has been wonderful. Well, for me personally, um, I enjoy homeschooling because it's not limiting. You have more time to do things that you're actually interested in. And I think, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the big thing is you have so much more freedom. Um, to do what you love and enjoy. If you want to go to dancing on a Tuesday at 
2 p.m. You might as well, you can just go to the studio and go dance at 2 p.m. I really enjoy dancing. I've been dancing from mm. yeah, a great stress reliever. It's a great place to release. You know, if it's not me putting on um, Matt Stefanina on the TV and dancing right here, um, I'm either out swimming. Yeah, I really enjoy swimming in the afternoons, especially. I also like studying stuff that are not really in the curriculum, like I said, because I'm still in AS levels and there's still the A level stuff, and the A level stuff is what I'm really interested in. He definitely, I, I find, since he's been homeschooling, Ollie takes a lot more pride in his work, and he's 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 much more worried about his results. Funnily enough. He's become quite self-driven and um, motivated to do well. What I like too is that it allows for um, tailoring it to their different strengths. So Kian, for example, used to be quite bored at school, so he didn't feel challenged enough. Whereas for our youngest, so in his case, he was developing this real dislike, very strong dislike for school. And so for him, we could get him up to the level again, restore his confidence, get him confident with reading and writing, and do it at his pace. They give a lot of content but in a simple way. And then as you move through the grades, so Kian will be often studying the same thing. So he'll do electric circuits, but now in a grade six level. And so they cycle the subjects. They just keep adding information onto each subject. So when you study electric circuits in grade six, it's not new because you already did it in yes. grade two. And I, I think it's so clever. I mean, we. We didn't have that, which is why I don't remember electric circuit because we did it once, I survived it and promptly forgot it for the rest of my life. I am a, an advocate for personalized learning because if, if we look back, if I look back at how I was educated, we all started grade one together. We all worked through the year together. We all moved to grade two together. There was no, there was no personalization. That is one of the, the nicest things about online schooling. Kids can actually work at their own pace, and why not? Why should kids all be lumped together? I mean, you, you get some kids who start walking at a year and two months, and other kids start walking at nine months. Um, why should we hold every single kid to the same standard? It makes absolutely no sense. In general, if you look at students, some kids excel at math, maybe, whereas they struggle with, let's say, English. And it's fantastic that kids can progress with math and maybe take a little bit longer with the English. Um, and again, it's, it's not just for kids who want to maybe, you know, progress faster. It's also for kids who are, who are struggling and they know that they're not being compared to everybody else academically. I think that does so much damage to so many kids when they're at school because they feel like they're a little bit behind because it took them a bit longer to read. However, in the end, we all end up walking. I mean, we all start crawling, but we all end up walking. Nobody turns around and says, how old were you when you started walking? And that is why so many kids thrive with personalized learning and online schooling, because online schooling caters for that. It enables kids to work at their own pace. That helps boost their confidence as well. By boosting a kid's confidence, that's how kids succeed. It's become much more normal. I think it's, um, it's such an amazing gift to be able to offer to our kids. When I was younger, I really was not a great academic performer. My teachers didn't want to pass me into grade one because I couldn't cut straight. And I really didn't enjoy school. I wasn't a great performer. It was a hugely anxious time for me. I hated Sunday nights. And if you fast forward, I graduated top of my class, became an actuary, continued to study. And you could ask, like, what was the turning point? And that was because I had a father that really took the time to personalize my education, make it more relevant for me, help me study at my own pace. So. Did I like or dislike school? I would say that I disliked it because it didn't cater for my personal needs. Um, I had to fit into a mold, one teacher delivering to a class of 30 kids and we weren't all at the same level. Now I understand that there needs to be an exit um, to tertiary, 
but the journey can be different. So we decided to start an online school because we found that with online and technology, we could deliver something that was far more personalized than what a traditional schooling system would enable. Kids can take exams at differing levels. They don't have to progress based on their age. They progress based on their skill set and their level of mastery. And so to me, this is what really was a turning point personally in my own life. And we wanted to be able to give that same experience to all students where they could work at their own pace, make content more multi-sensory and fun, make it more engaging so that learning was active and not passive and something that they could actually develop a love for. It was not about passing exams, but about learning how to think and educating yourself to use those tools for your future. Sometimes for me, there's still a, a part of me that goes, yes, you know, the gala and the sports and, the, and that traditional way of school that I grew <laughs> up in. And so it has been an adjustment to letting some of that go. As, but at the same time, I must say, I feel like the world has changed. And I think mm. COVID accelerated that. It's a huge shift. And I think suddenly it's like all of that is a lot of, that's great, but it's a lot of wasted time. And there's a lot of time to start exploring other interests mm, that are more specific nice, to a yeah. child. It, it, it's like, so there's, you know, there's always a trade-off between things. But mm. I, I think that education is going through a metamorphosis. And I think that traditional way is becoming more archaic, more time is wasted, more time is lost. And I think we need to start thinking of the, the future world. Mm. And, you know, when we... When I went to school, you know, it's like a banker or, you know, you're going to corporate or you're doing this. It's like very narrow doctor, lawyer things. Whereas this now, it's like the career span is just, it's almost overwhelming. I think kids almost need to not think of what am I going to do, but think of what I like. And then by the time he's out of school, I mean, there's going to be careers we haven't even thought of yet. Mm -hmm. Industries that don't exist. So I think this idea now of that traditional model is starting to fade. And I think that now more time needs to be sent on critical skills that yeah. he has. And so like- And Kian preparing and them our, for life. Preparing them for life. So like he has worked, he knows what an eight hour work day is. He's been on shoots. Mm. He knows He's how been difficult- to job interviews. Job interviews. He knows how to present himself. He knows what it feels like to make money. Mm and to work towards something. And all of that comes out of an environment which allows flexibility. That's what online schooling enables, is mm. that kind of schooling. Whereas just by the time they go through normal school, then they do sports for two hours afterwards. Then they got to do a homework when they come home. Mm. Where is the time to learn all these critical soft skills? Mm. Emotional intelligence. As a work psychologist, I believe it's important to understand that the job market of the future will likely be very different from what we know today. With advancements in technology, automation, artificial intelligence, many jobs that currently exist may become obsolete. However, it's also important to note that there will be new jobs and industries that will emerge as well. From a psychological perspective, it's essential to teach children the skills that will help them to adapt to this uncertain future. These type of skills include problem solving, creativity, communication, collaboration, emotional intelligence, and adaptability. These skills aren't just beneficial for the future job markets, but for life in general. Future ready education, I believe, is about much more than, than just the content. Obviously, you want your kids to, to, to learn enough theory at school so that they're able to determine where their likes and their dislikes are so that they can make wise choices when it comes to what they want to go and study one day. But I believe that this is where emotional intelligence comes in and confidence and building character strengths over and above just teaching kids curriculum. When I think about when I was at school, we didn't there were no classes on confidence, kindness, resilience, uh, patience. And I think that 
What's very important is that you have well-rounded learners um, who can integrate confidently into the workplace. I believe the personalization helps to build confidence. And I think that's one of the most important things that any parent can give to their, to, to their child is, is that they, they leave school one day and they are confident members of society. I think another important thing to help kids become future ready is to help them understand from, from, a, from a young age that failure is part of life and that they need to learn how to deal with failure. You often see cases of kids who were straight A students in school and then they'll go to university and for the first time they will experience failure and they're often not equipped to deal with that. You often find cases where highly intelligent people go into the workplace but they don't thrive at all because they don't have those skills. Skills to, to manage people effectively, skills to, to lead um, uh, pe people effectively and that can often prevent them from climbing the corporate ladder in the workplace. So life skills um, are extremely important and then I also think basic skills like teaching kids how to save, how to deal with money. Those kids can, can leave school and they can be ready to go to university and study. The transition from high school to tertiary studies can be quite challenging for many students. It's a big change in their lives and it can be both exciting and overwhelming for them. But one of the main reasons why students may struggle to transition is that they're not prepared for the increased level of autonomy and self-regulation that's expected at the tertiary level. In high school, students are used to a more structured environment with clearly defined expectations and responsibilities. But in tertiary studies, they need to take more ownership of their learning and manage their time and responsibilities more independently. Teaching a child independence at a school level can have a huge impact on their development and can benefit them in adult life in many ways. For example, when children are given a chance to make their own decisions and take responsibility for their actions, they learn that they are capable of solving problems, completing tasks and achieving goals. This sense of self-efficacy or belief in one's own abilities can carry over into adulthood and help them navigate new and challenging situations with confidence. Another benefit of teaching independence at a school level is that it helps children develop self-regulation skills. This includes the ability to manage their emotions, thoughts and behaviours. Teaching independence at a school level can also help children develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. When children are given the freedom to make their own choices and solve problems, they learn to think critically, analyze information and come up with creative solutions. Teaching independence at a school level can also help children develop resilience as they learn to cope with mistakes and setbacks and recover from failures. These skills are essential for success in adult life and can help them navigate the complex and ever-changing world. Teaching independence should be balanced with guidance, support and protection. Independence is a gradual process and children should be guided to make their own de decisions in a safe and supportive environment. I think this form of schooling actually prepares the kids, kids better for success later on in life because they have to take responsibility for planning their own learning. They've, they've really got to plan their day and take a lot of responsibility on their own shoulders and to check they understand the material as they're learning it. Um, I, I think it's a fantastic preparation for, for future life and certainly I mean their transition into further education, university and things will be that much easier for doing this. When I'm older I'd like to be the head of marketing for an awesome brand like GoPro or Billabong Red Bull, any cool brand like that, <laughs> I'd love to do that because it just gives me opportunity, like I can travel. I think that it makes him to be more prepared for future endeavours that he's going to come across and I think he's going to be, to be able to compete yeah, in the workplace when, when, when now he's ready.
for work? So after school, I okay, so I'm really interested in quantum mechanics. So after school, I'm looking to maybe, you know, do research specifically in quantum mechanics. Like, can I get nerdy a little bit? A few years ago, there was something that was discovered um, at CERN called the Higgs boson. Some people call it the God particle, okay? And the Higgs boson basically is what gives particles mass. So if you can imagine two particles shooting across space, right? It's just two tiny ones shooting across space. And then they're on this mat almost, right? So this one particle interacts with this field with this, um, with space basically. And the more it interacts with this space, the more it slows down as it moves across space. And this one does not interact with space at all. So it just shoots across space at the speed of light. So that means that part, what gives particles mass is this particles interaction with this field called the Higgs field. And my research or where I'm hoping to get to um, is to, if, can we limit how these particles interact with the, with this um, Higgs field because if we can that would mean we could you know shoot particles across space at the speed of light what does that mean light speed travel Star Wars you know so yeah after school well uh, some I have like two main career choices that I want so I want to maybe be like a director or filmmaker Ooh. like I write the ideas and stuff because I have my YouTube channel and I really enjoy that so maybe in the future or a singer, songwriter, because I really like um, singing, and I think I think according to you guys, I'm quite good at it. So yeah, so we've definitely seen a lot of personal growth since starting this homeschooling journey in Kian. Well, the ability to organize and manage his time, which I've actually been very impressed by. I can't say I was expecting that he would manage as well as he has. Mm. He really rose to the challenge mm -hmm. and started taking responsibility for his own actions, his own work. And so now it's not like we sit and say, you will do English now. You will do math now. You will yeah. do science now. No, he tells me, mom, I need you to print my science. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the other improvement, obviously, is the critical thinking and ability to problem solve and think in a very different way. Um, him being who he is, so he has a great memory, so he could do the learning, a lot of information, memorize it, and just spit it back out. So he was good at that, so was I. But then it all flies out of your head and you never better for it. Um, whereas now he's really learned to, to think and apply his mind in a different way. It's teaching them to think teaching them to think out of the box, problem solve. Very importantly is to ask questions. And, and I think that's a critical skill because you can't know everything, but you can ask, know what the right questions are. And in today's world, mm. you can find those answers a lot easier. Nowadays, you need to learn how to, how to research. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Today, you need to learn how to research. And that's and that's what they make you do. They make you ask questions, and then they tell you to research. It, it just helps you understand what you're learning a whole lot more because then you, because then you've researched, and then you've mm. got an extra information to support what you already know. Because you have all the information at your disposal, but it doesn't help if you don't know how to use it or mm. how to find it. So then, and what they're teaching you is to do, use what you know to find out what you don't know. And I think the other thing that is preparing him for life is because he has to learn to self-manage ah. and be disciplined. Um, when you start driving yourself, uh, you become far more aware of your own personality um, and your own weaknesses and strengths. The term future-ready education is not about the subject that you're learning or the topics that you learn. It's about learning how to use your brain and apply the tools that you've been taught in your childhood for your future. And that applies to your tertiary education and to your career. So if you're in an environment that teaches you how to learn, how to think, how to use tools, in today's day and age, theory is available anywhere at the touch of a button. But what's not available at the touch of the button is how to critically think about what is being placed in front of you and to create something out of that, whether that is a solution to a problem, whether that is innovation. Kids need to be able to adapt. There's something called mental fluidity. 
people need to be able to adapt to different environments, deal with emotional stress, academic stress, and we focus on building confidence and resilience. And those to me are the ingredients that really ensure that our kids are successful throughout their careers. As a parent myself, I don't try and protect my child and make sure that they have the most perfect life. But what I do is ensure whatever experiences they're going through, we have time to reflect on it, understand what we could have done better, and use that lesson for the future. If you know how to adapt to different types of people, situations, and use that to the benefit of yourself and the people around you, you'll be able to handle anything that life throws at you. That's being future ready. Because I was not, this was not an idea in my mind, not even in the remotest corner of my mind. I was against this whole idea. But what I've seen is, is that like in the school system, it's like the kids don't know what they're trying to achieve by a certain stage and where they're going. But they don't actually know what am I trying to do before the end of this week? What am I trying mm. to do before the end of this term? And I think we get this idea that, ah, oh, kids, you know, they just want to hang out. But it's, it causes a lot of anxiety because they mm. have no idea of context. That's crazy. Mm. And so I think that's the power of online. Mm. It's just very clear. Yeah. And there's almost a security that comes with that. Mm -hmm. And when they feel secure and in control, they learn better. Yeah, exactly. I can see my progress. That's really nice. It's like I can, I can see what I need to do. And then I can plan. I so can you have see. a satisfaction. Yeah. You I can, can see, see what, what you're doing. going to do. Yeah. Mm. And where is, is the school that you used to go to? I had no idea what I was going to do. You have no idea where... Yeah. Where you're at. Where you're at mm. and what you have to achieve before a certain period of yeah. time. Hey? Mm. Like at the and end then, of the term. And you wouldn't feel like you're doing much, especially if others are being slower. Then you would be like, okay, well, this is taking a while, so now I'm falling behind. Mm. Mm. But you might not be, but you don't know, actually, like... Yeah, so I think uh, that's one thing with the homeschooling is that, or the online schooling, and I say that because for me there's a difference, like a homeschooling can just be a parent there, whereas it's online there is a different aspect to that, where the teachers are online, so there is a difference. The premium package, you could just ask, ask a question yeah. and the response is like almost immediate. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, like once, once she sends you a message and you send one back, they'll just instantly reply. Yes. It'll literally be like you're texting. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable in a, virtual, in a virtual lesson with the teacher than in physical school, because in like the virtual classroom, I can, uh, if she's busy talking, I can send her a message um, and then she can read it later. So then I don't forget my question and, and then I can have my camera on and I can be with all the other students. You can look around you, you can see them and you can hear everyone, yeah, it just works a lot better. Personalized learning for a child is A, being able to study at your own pace, but B, being in a safe environment where you feel safe to ask a question, where you don't have to feel that there are another 30 kids that are understanding the topic that's being taught, because that can be quite nerve wracking for a child. Because we're in the safe online environment, kids don't have to worry about being teased, judged, bullied, and that enables kids to truly develop a love for learning because most of the time in a physical environment, kids are so worried about judgment that that's all they can focus on. And it actually hinders the retention of information. I can tell you that social anxiety in a schooling environment can have a significant impact on a child's ability to learn, understand concepts and retain knowledge in the classroom. An example of a child with social anxiety can be afraid to ask for help when they don't understand something. They may be too afraid to speak up and ask the teacher for clarification, and they may instead try to struggle through the material on their own. So what I've noticed from um, going from a traditional um, classroom to an, an online classroom um, is that, you know, in a traditional classroom, you're sort of nervous or scared to ask anything. 
um, and especially for me, it was like, what are people gonna think, you know? And sometimes you're scared because you 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 might as well you're basically interrupting the class. The teacher see and you have a question and you have to raise your hand and you're interrupting the class. But now in a virtual classroom, there's none of that. You type your question in the chat and the teacher will get back to it. Obviously, the quality of teacher on the other side is important. Well, the teachers are very good. <laughs> yeah, you really enjoy your teacher. Mm, you do enjoy your teachers, yeah. Huh? So for French, we have a teacher that's fluent in French. Oh, and she is actually French. Yeah, she's French. And we have a Zoom call with her every Friday. What I like about it is that uh, him and his friends, they would go to Microsoft Teams, discuss problems, share ideas. And so I think the system is constantly improving. It's not just a flat screen. It's yeah, you definitely feel that you have a community. There are community. people on the other side. You, mm -hmm. you know that there are actually humans on the other side. So ways that I learn um, besides the homeschooling um, website is I have Duolingo where I have over a 497 day streak. So then I learned French on there. I've learned a bit of Russian, a bit of Ukrainian, a bit of Zulu, but mainly French, <laughs> <laughs> mainly French. I just sometimes do extra um, lessons on other things just because it's fun. And then I do Simply Piano which is an app that teaches you how to um, play piano and it can hear your notes and then it'll tell you if it's wrong or right and if you still can't get it, then it'll show you the keys. And then, and then, so then singing? Yes, and I do singing. That's so in that person. Every yeah. And I'm singing three songs at the end of the year. I'm singing, this, so there's like this Christmas carol thing in front of 800 people. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess up. And then, um, and then I'll usually make a YouTube video because I have like a tripod and a little mic. And, and then when and then it's you summer, just, you go swimming. Yes, yeah, swimming. It's and you do art, so they have yeah, external art. Yeah, art on Wednesday. Art. You have to have outlets because there needs to still be a social aspect. Mm. I've been doing homeschooling for almost two years now. And over the time, I've actually been able to build friendships in the online space. I mean, Kian used to tell me nearly every day when he was at school, he was like, Mom, why do, why do I have to waste my life? <laughs> it was literally every other day. And now it's not a thing. He's not wasting his life anymore. Mm. And at the end of the day, I want them to come out with a mind that's alive, that's able mm -hmm. to think, that's able to problem solve, that's able to think laterally, that's able to to spark, that they can be introduced to something that they've, that they've never seen before mm -hmm. and have the capacity and the skill set to learn and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is actually what I love the most about the curriculum, is that it, it's, it's, it's making their mind alive. Mm -hmm. And I think that is invaluable. That is invaluable because whatever they land up doing, They've got the skill set to apply their mind and make it successful. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>